no rescaldo do mais recente ataque do Irão a Israel. A Record entrevistou o vice-chefe de missão da Embaixada de Israel, que explicou como o país está a avaliar a situação, garantindo que qualquer decisão que seja tomada pelo governo israelita terá em consideração a posição dos países aliados, nomeadamente dos Estados Unidos. Considering the last attack from Iran, uh, what actions can we anticipate from Israel considering this specific situation? Well, Israel is right now assessing the situation. This uh, threat is both new and old. Iran has been attacking Israel for over the last 45 years in different ways. Um, and this attack was not new in the sense of the intention. What was new is the scale of it, the scope of it, and Iran shooting also from its own territory, not just by using its uh, proxies. Right now, what Israel is requesting are basically three things. To recognize that the uh, Revolutionary Guard Corps in Iran is a terrorist group and should be designated as such. To sanction Iran not only on the drones they've been selling Russia and they've been using against Israel and against other uh, Western countries, but also to sanction their ballistic and cruise missiles, which they have been using, not only against Israel. And the third thing is to make sure that Iran does not get a nuclear weapon in their hands, which they out loud and flat out said that they will use against Israel. Today they said, the government said that all options are open, considering a response. What can you say about that? Israel, like I said, still is assessing the situation. Whatever decision we take will be together with our allies, together with the United States, together with the countries that helped us protect Israel from this threat when it uh, started, when the 330 different cruising missiles, ballistic missiles and drones were launched towards Israel. And we will together decide what is the right course of action but the Iranian attack cannot be left unanswered because the deterrence is the only thing to make sure that this does not happen again. We cannot leave the Israeli people, the only Jewish state in the world, defenseless. And this has to be answered in the form of deterrence that makes sure it cannot happen again. The United States and other allies, just like you said, like the United Kingdom, um, have expressed their support to Israel, but also asked for some restraint. How is the, what is the position of Israel considering these the declarations like from David Cameron, uh, Emmanuel Macron? So France, the UK, the USA and other countries have been involved in helping Israel defend itself. And many countries, many in Europe and outside of Europe, have declared their uh, support in Israel in its right to self-defense and its understanding that this attack is not something that can be acceptable. Whatever decision will be taken will be taken in with those uh, comments and with those uh, understandings with our allies in to consideration. Oh, the United States already said to Benjamin Netanyahu that they won't participate in any military action with Israel uh, toward, towards Iran. Uh, is this a problem for the, go the Israeli government? No, and it's one of the considerations that we have. We understand the position of the United States, we understand the position of the UK, and we understand the position of other countries in the region. What we've seen for the first time is that countries that are not uh, um, naturally aligned with the cooperation with Israel have stepped up to prevent this from escalating, whether they were dragged into it or chose to help support and prevent the threat from reaching Israel. And this is something that shows us more and more countries in the region are opting out for stabilization and for uh, regional agreements and for normalization, which Iran has been uh, working tirelessly to prevent and to destabilize. Israel is currently engaged militarily in conflicts in the Gaza Strip, also some combats in the Lebanon border. Is uh, Israel prepared for another war front? Israel does not want war, and Iran has declared war when they launched their missiles and their drones from their own territory. Um, and we have to remember that those points that you mentioned, and you're right to mention them, Hamas, Hezbollah and also the Houthis in Yemen are all working as proxies of Iran and are the long reach of Iran in damaging Israel, in trying to attack the Israeli people and the Israeli civilian population, like what we saw on the massacre in October 7. And I've also read the publications on the amounts of money from Iran that funded this attack and also acting 
with Hezbollah as their reach inside Lebanon. Do you think this ongoing tension between Israel and uh, Iran will have in any impact on Gaza operations like the military operation that is being prepared in Rafah? The majority of the operation in Gaza has been limited to a very pinpoint uh, uh, position of trying to arrest the last of the terrorists of Hamas and preventing them from being in control of Gaza, both against their own population and against the population of Israel. Our number one goal is the security of Israel and the security of the Israeli people. Is Israel also concerning about civilian life in Gaza, like in Rafa? Absolutely, yes. And uh, Israel's uh, concern for life of Palestinians is one of the things that led the operations for humanitarian aid the way they've been ongoing, even though our 133 hostages have yet to receive any visit from the Red Cross or any uh, aid or even the medications that were promised in an agreement that will be received. And we found them thrown into the garbage in hospitals. Israel wants to make sure that Hamas doesn't have the capability to attack Israel the way it did and that what happened, the massacre of October 7 cannot repeat itself. And the goal of trying to do that with minimizing casualties, uh, minimizing collateral damage, minimizing uh, uh, damage to human lives of Palestinian people, is what's been taking so long as it has been. And having this in mind is also whatever operation will have to at some point take place in Rafah, if it does, when it does, it will take into consideration the same things and the same values that we share as a democracy with the rest of the Western world. Thank you.